I showed up. And the other two guys just bailed, but that's all right. <laughs> there is a lot going on uh, in the county. And I want to thank all of you, first of all, for the role that you play, because we are a team. I love sports. I love football. We talk about a huddle, and that's exactly what a huddle is. You get everybody together to discuss what's going to happen and how you become successful in that next play. Every player in that huddle has a role, and it's not the same role. But if you do your job to the very best of your ability, the team has success. Um, I grew up playing football in my life, and most of it was an offensive lineman who never gets any credit for anything. But you know what? When the team scores, everybody's happy. And that's part of the role, and that's what I like about huddle and the idea of a huddle and the idea of teamwork is that each of you knows what your role is, and when you function at your very, very best, we function best as a team, and everybody's happy. We have great success. So, anyway, I just want to start off with saying thank you for that. Robert has a story, and I'm going to ask him to share. He has done, I think, a fantastic job as our PIO, and we're expanding that department or looking to, in the long term, grow that department. We have found uh, some of the things that he does has paid great dividends for us. And I wanted him to share the story on the, uh, the latest video he did with regards to hiring. So, Robert, you might tell us what went on there. Yeah, good morning. Uh, so, I brought this uh, to the attention of the office holders at their meeting. Uh, if you'll notice on our Facebook feed, obviously, I do some posts that are just, you know, fun posts or something that's going on in the county. But lately, we've been doing a lot of job-related or hiring posts. And so, uh, in building operations, uh, Gary Rowe was having a tough time hiring a mechanic. And so, he had one of our PM mechanics named Andrew Darst. He, um, their thought was that, you know, instead of just doing like a standard graphic, says make $16 an hour, it's Monday through Friday, that if you kind of made a video that said, why, how great the county is to work for. Uh, here's exactly what you're going to be doing. All of, and he, I even had him go and like change the filter out. And I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of just play it while, while I'm talking. But so I just put together, it's real short. It's like a minute long. I'll keep the volume low. But the thought was that someone would see this and maybe a little more interested because they had, they had done it for like months and not even gotten a single application. So I'm not saying that this helped them hire someone, but they did have several applicants uh, apply for it uh, last week. And I think that they offered someone a job. And he actually said that the video was one of the reasons that he even applied. So I'm truly not tooting my own horn. I just thought that, that where I'm going with this is we have quite a few positions that are still open. So if your department or office is needing something like this, literally Gary just sent me an email and said, we're having trouble hiring this job. Here's, I have this person who's willing to talk on camera. We literally shot it in like 30 minutes and I put it together and it helped him hire someone. So if you want to do something like that, you can just send me an email. And uh, another thing that we can do is we have about $7,500 annually to boost ads, which is basically just expands your reach on Facebook. That's all it does. And we have about 7,000 people who subscribe to Green County, but if you boost it, it's roughly like 500, uh, for every $50 you spend, you get 500 to 2,000 people to look at it per day. And you can set that for like two weeks or however you want, or however long you want. So the, the, the idea would be that you can get, you know, triple our audience, uh, you know, reach out there just for 50 bucks. So I do think boosting did help. It got only about 3,000 views, but it was enough to get someone to apply for it. So that, um, you know, I know like the prosecutor's office right now has a bunch of jobs. And so what HR will typically do is just give me a, a list of jobs and I'll do my best to make it look good. But if you want to kind of spice it up a little bit and make it a little more interesting, this is totally something we can do. And so, um, you know, the commission's idea with giving me some of this money was to expand our, just our Facebook page. But I think that this is an indirect benefit of that. Um, even if we don't get engagements and likes and all the analytic buzzwords, you are getting an indirect benefit of getting more applicants. So if that's something that you're interested in, that's just one example of uh, a hiring thing that we can do. And LinkedIn does have something similar. I have not used that yet, but Facebook is where all of our real traffic comes in. So just a thought, if you need help hiring, you got it, I guess. It works. It works. <laughs> Thank yeah, you very much, Robert. I appreciate that. Absolutely, it works. And if you want to uh, 
think of some ideas and daydream a little bit in your office if you have a position opening. Uh, get with us and make it fun, make it interesting, make it whatever, but it does seem to work. So I would say, yeah, uh, I would recommend that you use Robert's services in that. Something else I want to talk about in our building project, we had somewhat mapped out a plan of an order of construction. Then we had a need occur. There's some, some destructive things that happened over in the juvenile detention center. And as you know, we've replaced a couple of doors looking at some other things that we need to do. And we know that ultimately, and I mean ultimately within the next two or three years, that building is going to be flattened and hauled away and made into a parking lot. So it didn't make much sense to continue to pump thousands of dollars into maintaining a facility that ultimately was going away. So we changed the order of construction slightly and sped up work on the juvenile portion of the campus uh, restructuring. And with that, we are uh, working on the detention portion first uh, because that made the most sense for us from a timeline. And then we can let Bill come up and, and you guys can discuss whatever you want to about that. Uh, but that's that's part of what we're doing and that's why we're moving juvenile to the to the top of the, the list here. So come on. I'll bring up. Julie up to uh, yeah. director of program and services. There you though. Go. Yeah, it's uh it's it's really um don't don't ever let anybody tell you that the government works slow. <laughs> <laughs> so I will tell you that um three weeks ago this past weekend, um we had quite an incident in detention and it it, it really was just the kind of a culmination of, of a lot of things that have been developing over a long time. Um, you know, that the facility is 30 years old. Um, the doors that were put in to, uh, to keep the kiddos in their room were commercial grade. They weren't really jail grade. Um, the locks were going on them. Uh, it's just an old facility. And um, couple that with the fact that we are seeing, um, I guess I'll call it a higher caliber of kid, a higher needs kid. <laughs> Um, you know, we're dealing with, uh, with 17 year olds and 18 year olds now. Um, at one point we had seven youth in detention. Three of them had murder charges. All of them had weapons charges. Um, these kids are not respectful or they, they don't like to listen. Not every kid in detention is that way, um, to be sure, but, but we are seeing a, a tougher youth to handle. And, uh, when kids can kick out their doors, um, it, it just creates a risk for the other kids that are in the center um, and, and our staff. Um, and it, it's just unsustainable. And as, you know, as Rusty said, you know, it, it didn't make sense to, to just kind of keep putting Band-Aids or, you know, on a, on a gaping wound. So uh, three weeks ago, Monday, called Chris. And uh, the next thing I know, um, we're in uh, APOD, uh, the jail. Um, and uh, making some pretty significant changes to this. I mean, literally, uh, in three weeks, um, we are pretty close to transforming it into a workable detention center. Um, when I say workable, there's there's a lot of work to be done yet still. Um, you know, our goal is to make this detention center secure, but we also want to make sure that it's trauma informed. We are dealing with kids, um, after all. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't want to treat the kids um, like little, little prisoners. So, but, um, you know, if you were to go over there and see it, and hopefully everybody will have a chance at some point in time as we get a little closer to, to move it in there that you can go over and look at it. Um, stairways have been cut out of there. Plexiglass has been put up. Walls have been put up. Um, painting has been done. Trauma-informed colors. Uh, we're getting ready to put a classroom in there. Uh, my understanding is, is that we're going to be able to also utilize B-Pod, which is immediately adjacent to that um, in the longer term to to make you know a gymnasium and other spaces that we're going to need so it has been a fast and furious three weeks um, just to get the physical plant ready um, ideally i think the the move-in date is is next week sometime uh, we've obviously got to you know adjust our policies and procedures in terms of how staff is going to get with the kids but i mean i, I just gotta you know commend the, the commission and Kevin and, and Rob and their crews just for, uh, I mean, the speed at which this this has been has been accomplished. Wow. Good. And Ms. Neely is uh, our director of youth and family programming, and uh, detention falls under her uh, her purview. So. Yes. So um, the first thing I'll start with is my personal mission to rename that building to the new facility. 
the old jail. Uh, please do not call it the old jail. Right. <laughs> it is really, really important for kids who are in detention to be treated like children, um, even when they're very strong. So the importance of a juvenile detention center is to keep the community safe and keep the kids safe and make sure they show up at hearings. Kids are never sentenced to detention. Detention is not a punishment. It's not used as a punishment for children. Now, that's not to mean that it doesn't have punitive aspects to it. You take a kid out of their home. You put them in a secure room to sleep in at night. You put them away from their friends. That is a punitive aspect of detention. But the role of detention personnel, the role of the juvenile office, is to take a kid who may be identifying a little bit as a criminal or as um, someone who wants to be involved in, game, in gangs and changing that identity. So the space is super important. Environment is very, very important in how that change occurs. And so um, I'm very, very thankful for the work that's been done thus far and the work that will be done to take this um, new facility <laughs> and create an environment where kids can hopefully be helped. Um, these are kids who have been through a lot of systems their whole life. Um, we take it really, really personal and really, really um, put a lot of emphasis on the value of the work that we do for these kids. They're really important to us. And so please, if you hear anyone say old jail, say old facility. Old yes. facility. There you that go. Awesome. There you Thank go. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Yes, and it's already, when it gets completed, it's not going to feel like a jail. I, people won't be able to walk through there and say, oh, this was the old jail. If they didn't know, they won't know. Um, but that the, the issues that we're having really with the, the, some of the tougher kids and the facilities has caused that to be priority one. So as we get the detention portion moved over there, it just makes sense to go ahead and move the rest of, of juvenile into that building as soon as possible. We'll also, by the way, have a, a, a private entrance. We'll have an entrance for the juvenile portion that it doesn't feel like you're going to court or you're going to jail. Uh, we'll have multiple in, entrances, but uh, I think it's important to understand that people who are there to see their kids, who are there for family issues and that sort of thing, will have an entrance that doesn't feel like they're checking into a jail or to a courtroom. So it will all function and flow very, very well. We just put it to the top of the list for the reasons that we discussed, and we think it makes sense. And I thank all of you guys, really, for the applause. Uh, it's a pat on the back to everybody here who's pitched in, because I can tell you this, when we made the call to get it ready now and, just, and told the reason behind that, everybody dropped what they were doing and, and went to lightning speed to make this happen. So you're right, in three weeks, to turn it from an empty, vacant old jail into a, really, a, it's very nice. It's clean, it looks good. A new detention for facility for youth. That is breakneck speed, especially, really in any any place, especially for government. So we're proud of that and thank you for all you guys have done. Yeah. Please, pat on the back, anybody in cleaning and maintenance and building yeah. maintenance. I mean, it has been a team effort and they have been absolutely amazing. That's great, yeah. And you see, that's what, that's the kind of thing that happens when you're working on a team that uh, truly cares about the mission and cares about one another. When one team is in a crisis mode, everybody pitches in. Everybody that can does all that they can to make things better and, uh, and, and did it at breakneck speed. So really, a, I think it's a testament to everybody in this room and all of the departments and the leadership that you guys show to your teams to, uh, to rally behind a team member that's, that's in a crisis mode and, and to pull them out of it. So... Thank you, and thank you for what you guys do. I know it's not an easy job, but um, we're, we're, we're glad for what you do, and it helps our community a great deal. <laughs> well, we certainly appreciate that. Uh, did anybody else have any other questions about what's going on with uh, in the commission office or how things are, are moving? Well, you guys are awesome, and uh, thank you for all that you do. I sincerely mean that. Uh, Really, everybody in our office feels the same way. It's a great team, great to be a part of it, and um, I'm just thankful that I have, have an opportunity to play a role in that. So thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Y'all have a great day.